Okay, today we are going to set up TrueNAS so that we can get these alerts in an email from TrueNAS when inevitably something goes wrong. So let's take a look in our TrueNAS and get that set up. So once we're logged into our TrueNAS interface, we can go through most of these settings and it doesn't really seem like there is anywhere to set up emails. There's advanced, there's general, not really anywhere to set up emails. You know, we can go into localization settings, nothing in there, nothing for NTP, nothing for GUI. So the only real setting that we do find for the most part regarding email is in our users. If we select a user, we can see that there is an email field right here. But this isn't going to allow us to send an email. This is just an email for the user. So let's figure out where we can set the email up. So what we need to do is click on the little bell icon at the top right, and then click on the little gear again at the top right. And this allows us to set up your alert settings, the alert service, and email. So let's go ahead and select email. And this is where we're going to set up the server and username and password for the email service. So let's fill that out. Uh, the from email, you can put whatever really you like from here. I leave it as root at truenas.local. We will need that as well. The name, I'm just gonna put it as TrueNAS and home. So this is my home TrueNAS. The outgoing mail server, this is the server that you're going to use to send emails to wherever this email is going to go. You need to have an email server. So this is going to be your Gmail or a website or some probably some service that you pay for. It could be a local email server as well. So if you want to use something like Gmail, you can select the Gmail OAuth and select the button to log into Gmail. This will just use your Gmail credentials, just like you would use to set up your mail account on Windows or on your iPhone or your Android phone, whatnot. So you can select that. You'll say proceed here. You'll be able to choose your sign in with Google. So you'd put your email address and you'd sign in. It would capture those credentials or the token for that to be able to sign in and you would sign in. Same thing with SMTP. However, here you can, if you don't have Gmail, you can use like Outlook or Yahoo Mail or whatever. You would just enter in your credentials and the mail server and the mail server being if you had manually set this up through uh, you know, Windows Mail or Outlook Mail or whatever mail app you have on your phone or on your computer, you'd use the same configuration to do that than you would here. We're going to use the TechWorks email service. So it is mail.mytechworks.online. Okay. And the mail server port for my outbound is going to be port 465. And don't worry, this is all pretty just public information. This is something that you can get by doing a who is on this domain. So don't be too worried about seeing this. So we're going to select SSL and my mail server requires authentication to be used. So we'll put in the username and the password here to authenticate to this server. So this is going to be blanked out. Okay. And then we will save this and then we'll send a test mail and we'll get this pop up. So this is basically saying that there is no user that has an email from address configured. So super easy to fix. We'll just copy this address here. We'll head on over to credentials. Well, actually we'll save this first. So make sure that that's saved. We don't want to lose what we filled in. We'll go over to users, select our admin user, and we will add that email. Scroll down, select save. So now when we go back to our 
email settings. We should not get that pop up anymore. It will set it up, fetch it, and test mail sent. So that test mail isn't actually going to make it to an email address. All it's doing is checking that this information has a response from this mail server. So we can see that here. If we go to our jobs and go to our history, we can see here that there was a message sent using that information. Now, if we actually want an email to be sent as a test, we can go up to the alerts, the gear icon, and select alert services. We'll have two services in here by default. The first one is email. This is the one that we're interested in right now. We select the ellipses and select edit. And we're just going to add the email address that we want to send the email to. So that is going to be info at my email address. We'll save that. Edit again. And we're going to send a test alert. So I got a test alert here. And this is what you should receive. So now the next thing that you want to configure for me, I just left most of these settings at default, but it's going to be the alert settings. You'll notice that most of the stuff here is set to immediate. And what I'm most interested in at this time is storage applications and hardware. Most of this stuff is going to be either warning or critical with the exception of this notice here. You know, pool space is above 70%, not a huge deal. That's why it's set to notice. And the email goes out immediately. So we can change this to hourly. So when the space does go above 70%, it doesn't trigger immediately. It goes one hour later. Um, you kind of have to weigh in the fact that if something is increasing the storage quickly beyond 70%, like maybe it's going, you know, 71, 72, 73 every couple minutes, you may want to have this alert quickly before it reaches 100% or 95% or whatever it is. If you leave this on hourly, it may reach a higher percentage before you actually get an email. So important consideration. For me, I've left pretty much everything at its defaults. All the defaults are pretty good where they're set and they all make sense. So just take a quick review of the settings, make sure that they're where you want, and then you will get emails. So we can test this out. Obviously we did with a test email, but we can also do something like disconnect a disk in our RAID Z. So I will remove a disk from this RAID Z and see how long it takes for me to get an email. Okay, so the disk is now removed and we'll wait until we get an email. Okay, and the email just popped up now. So I'd say that was within about 30 seconds, maybe even less, 15 or 20 seconds. And we got the email that the Z1 pool is degraded. We'll have a quick time, we'll go and reattach that disk. And we should get an email saying that pool is no longer degraded. So here's our pool is in a degraded state and we have a missing disk. So let's go ahead and return that disk. Okay. And our disk is reattached. Our pool is back to healthy. We'll dismiss that alert. We don't need it anymore. Okay, and here is our email. It took a few minutes to come that our alert has been cleared. So the degraded state where it was removed, this alert is now cleared. So the alert to bring it up where it's been cleared took an extra minute or two, uh, but that's fine. So email is very important with this type of system, even in your at home NAS environment. I tend to find that once you've settled these systems in, you're not really often logged into the true NAS interface. This happened to me previously where I was comfortable with the true NAS setup and a SATA cable had gone bad on one of my disks and it became detached. And I didn't know about it for a few weeks because I didn't log into my true NAS interface often. I didn't have any email set up. 
it was a RAID 6 setup, so it was okay. The performance was still fine. I didn't notice anything about the storage that would indicate that something had gone wrong. So I learned my lesson there. If another disk had failed, it might have been a little more difficult to recover. Uh, so I got away with it that time. So now every time I set up my emails and I make sure that I know about these disks that go offline or any other issues that I can deal with them right away before anything gets worse. So I hope this helps you set up emails in your TrueNAS system. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.